Let me tell you, Soroka, of how we truly declared the long war. It was not with the anger of the vengeful spirit's guns, nor with the garbled, shrieking Vox transmissions of burning ships and failing outposts. No, I speak of the formal declaration, unknown even among the nine legions, but for the Ezekarion that gathered Abaddon's side. You see, even in our vaunted malignancy, we still observe the formalities. War must be declared. Sigimund was chosen for this responsibility. It felt right that he should carry our words back to the Imperium, back to the throne world itself, and it was a solemn conclave that gathered around his corpse. One of the Black Templar ships served as Sigismund's mausoleum. I was one of the four warriors that had carried him there, a pallbearer for our first Imperial foe. We had laid him upon one of the command tables in readiness. Abaddon handed me Sigismund's blade, not the sword of his high marshals, for that was gone in the hands of the surviving Black Templars, but Sigismund's favored blade, the black sword that had ripped through Abaddon's own armor. My lord bade me to carve our decoration along the length of the blade, and I did so with the point of my ritual Jamdara dagger and the acetylene kiss of psychic fire. Once it was done, we laid the cooling blade upon Sigismund's corpse and closed his hands around its hilt. No effort was made to hide the wound that had slain him, nor to mask the mangled ceramite and blood-stained mess of his tabard. The Night King's chin was baited with bloodfall as well. Abaddon whipped the worst of it from the old warrior's bearded features with a care that would astonish any Imperial witness. Abaddon touched the slash across his own face, a mark left by Sigimund's blade, a mark that Abaddon would carry with him down the many centuries to come. He keeps that scar to this day, a reminder of one of the worthiest foes we ever fought, and the moment the Great Crusade truly came to an end.